Hare Krishna Radha Gopinath Prabhu, welcome to the Monks podcast. Haribo, Haribo. Thank you very much for sparing the time. You know, I, from the first time I met you, it was about 20, 25 years ago when I had come to Radha Gopinath Temple and then I came with you to the Bhaktivedanta Hospital for the program you were doing at that time. So we stayed overnight in one of the rooms over there. So I, I was struck by you know, that you, I knew that you were the president of one of the biggest temples, one of the most successful temples in our movement. And yet you were so down to earth and you were taking so much, paying so much attention to you know, caring for me at that time. So then over the years, I came to know you more and more. And I feel that the topic we are discussing today, caring for devotees, you are an embodiment of that. You not only use, you talk about it, by your classes, but you embody it by, by giving time, attention, and uh, you just your kind presence along with your wisdom and your spontaneity. It just makes anybody who meets you feel at home with you. So uh, thank you very much for always being such a compassionate Vaishnava. And uh, I thought today we'll discuss on the topic of devotee care. Mm. <laughs> Uh, two things I would like to tell you. <laughs> Number one, that if I'm able to say or do anything right in terms of devotee care, I would give full credit to His Holiness Radhara Swami Maharaj, under whose shelter I am basking in the sunlight of devotee care. And because I feel so much sheltered with his concern and the systems he has painfully, painstakingly set up. That's one of the reasons for my survival in the movement and continue to be, you know, trying to share my might. Secondly, one of the reasons why immediately I agreed when you asked me to uh, share is because in my travels, wherever I have been re recently been traveling to speak about devotee care and uh, a lot of people I met who have been inspired and encouraged by and nourished by your uh, presentation of Krishna consciousness, they're in touch with you. And uh, even though they are so far away, but that's like their umbilical cord for regular nourishment. So I said, uh, wonderful opportunity to <laughs> hear you and serve you in some way, some meaningful way. <laughs> Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you so much for considering me, uh, you know, a candidate for your podcast. <laughs> you are much more than qualified. I'm grateful that you spared some time. And you know, as you rightly said, and I didn't get so much association of a spiritual master before, but I, I also felt sheltered by devotees. And that's why whatever I'm able to offer to others, it, so in a sense, it's like, a, it's only when we get something that we can give something. So, you know, you, can you share something about, uh, say, how you started getting involved in devotee care? Was that something, the caring culture you introduced, you, you saw right from the beginning when you introduced Krishna consciousness? Or was that a need that was recognized a few years after you were in the movement and then you started addressing that? Uh, as I said, I had the good fortune of being under the direct uh, supervision in a temple like Radha Gopinath Mandir where His Holiness Radhana Swami was in the earlier days physically present and giving a lot of quality time to all of us. So we had the good fortune of a very senior Vaishnav and a very mature person whose heart is into concern for devotees' uh, sustained progress and well-being. 
So I got the good fortune of seeing at close quarters what it means to uh, care for devotees. In the later years, when uh, we were asked by several other devotees from other temples to come and share, <coughs> uh, and I would go, but that was a time two questions came in my mind. Number one, we speak about devotee care, but is it really mentioned somewhere in Srila Prabhupada's books? Now the counselor system. So I wasn't very confident, though I had full conviction that devotee care is really important and what it actually is, more or less, because I, as I said, we received it so we received that shelter so much. But uh, to convince others in ISKCON, uh, because we have to be following in the footsteps of the founder Acharya. Mm. So that was my, uh, because I didn't dare ask Maharaj, you know, <laughs> how can I ask my Guru Maharaj, you know, where is it in the Prabhupada's <laughs> book? Though my conviction, my heart told me that it's there. And the second thing is, time, place and circumstance. Every temple situation is different. Their priorities are different. Their uh, locality and their needs are different. So, unless you know what are the principles behind devotee care, uh, simply to give some practices would not be appropriate. And I was desperately wanting to know what are those principles. Mm -hmm. And luckily, at that time, uh, His Holiness Niranjan Swami Maharaj got out, uh, brought out that book, Taking Care of Krishna's Devotees. Yes. When he mentioned the principle of shelter and strength, spiritual strength and spiritual shelter. With that, the principles, and he gave quotes mm -hmm. because most of it he mentions his experience in the Radha Gopinath Mandir. So, and he gave Srila Prabhupada's quotes because it takes one to know one, you know. He could recognize that people here were feeling sheltered, were feeling empowered, were feeling cared. And when he made that book from his God Brother's temple and quoted Prabhupada's verses, you know, purports to substantiate what is being given here is exactly what Prabhupada wanted. That was a time my conviction kind of increased, my clarity increased in, in, in addition to the conviction. Mm -hmm. And then when thankfully the devotee care committee, mm -hmm. which is a, uh, you know, offspring of the strategic planning team of the GBC brought out this manual, which was, which was talking the core principles of devotee care and how to implement it based on Srila Prabhupada and the GBC's, you know, uh, viewpoint. Uh, because otherwise it would be seen as one particular temple's system being imposed. Mm. But now we had, that was the time I decided that I have received so much, it's time to share with the world. I mean, with, with whomever is wanting to, you know, uh, you know, uh, hear it. Yes. I, I, I wrote that wherever they invite me, at least once I will surely go and share. That's how this whole thing started. Oh, okay. So can you roughly give the timeline? Means so you started traveling in the last few years, especially across the world, or you, you are doing devotee care kind of programs in the in you you Ukraine I have, actually also earlier before. No, I have been doing to a few temples, few temples. Uh, within our satellite centers and some places where we were invited uh, okay. overseas. But, but I didn't want to because uh, some people would say, he has come to roll a chapati. You're not trying to impose. That's true. Not everyone uh, liked the system being or, or the practices being imposed without the principles being explained or the uh, recommendations being uh, uh, guidelines being recommended. So this 2017 onwards, when the manual came out, 
Since that time, I'm eager to go out and share at least once with any temple. And, and thankfully, this is what the GBC also wants, that devotee care be established. So, so that's how I think. Yes, yes, yes. So this, I like this differentiation you made between practices and principles. So practices may be specific according to time, place, circumstances, but principles are universal. So devotees need to feel sheltered and they need to have strength. Now, how exactly that will be done at different places that has to be seen, but that is a, that is a universal, those two are universal principles we could say. So, so is it that, uh, is my understanding correct? What I said till now? Uh, I would like to share here. Yeah. The more I am sharing these, actually this manual is worth its weight in gold really. Because these are the realizations of senior leaders of ISKCON who are in the last 50 years taking care of devotees, facing the challenges that have arisen and overseeing communities of devotees and seeing the mistakes made by the, uh, or, or the, you know, uh, issues of the previous leadership where they, uh, you know, could have done better. And all of that has been put in such a wonderful way. So here, what one thing that was amazing for me is they talk about principles, values, guidelines, uh, sorry, huh? uh, uh, guidelines, practices, system and structure. I found it to be very, you know, here is a theory the top theory part, idealistic. You know, we have the highest philosophy, no doubt about it. You know, mm. but how to practically manifest it is a stage wise. So principles are universal truths that are there out there. Like a law of gravity, it exists there. Okay. Then there are values. Hmm. Values are something that you need to have individually or collectively as an organization to uh, apply those principles, understand the value of those principles. For example, let's say service attitude, you know, or Vaishnav Seva. Vaishnav Seva is a principle. And service, right? attitude, service to value. Service attitude yeah. value. Huh. The value would be. Yeah. Number one, service attitude. Number two, expertise, professionalism in terms of reliability to give services, you know, being there. It's, 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 it's a value partly manifested as skill, but our okay. or, or, uh, uh, attention to details. Okay. You know, responsibility for li devotees' lives, whom I am responsible. From that comes guidelines. From those value flow guidelines. What are the guidelines? All the brahmacharis should be taken care. All the uh, children should be taken care. All the ladies should be taken care. All the elderly should be taken care. Okay. So these are uh, more specific guidelines. Yes. Okay. Right? Which are very, very generalized. Okay. Now these to be applied in different, according to time, place and circumstance, according to the situation there, according to the resources available, hmm. there are some practices to put the guideline to action. These are like the building blocks of executing the guideline. For example, let us have a Brahmachari class for the Brahmacharis. Now, thrice a week, we will have exclusive class for the Brahmacharis. We will have a person inquiring about the needs of the Brahmacharis. Or for the ladies, we will have, because each one's need is different. Hmm. So practices to fulfill the guidelines. And a group of practices form a system, whether it is counselor system, mentor system, Bhakti Vriksha system, Maitri system. A group of practices form a system and to put the system in place, there should be a structure. So there is a GBC, then there is the, the temple president, then there is the devotee care department, accountable to each, you know, above like that. 
So from the most subtlest level of principle, it comes to the system and structure to successfully implement and execute it efficiently. That's, like that. That's very, very comprehensive. I just re, re, sorry, release this. So principles are out there. Values yeah. are what enable us to actually internalize and apply those principles. Appreciate and uh, yeah. And then when we want to apply them, first we need some broad broad guidelines of how they are to be applied, which would yeah. be again we could say somewhat universal. Although there's less you, they are more specific than principles, but still the guidelines are like as you said, take care of this group of people, and then how yeah. to do that will be the uh, will be the guide uh, guidelines practices. Practice. And a set of practices is, uh, so is a system. You know, system and structure. I was just not so clear. So system would be, say, say the counselor system is a system, and the structure would be how yeah. does the counselor work with uh, the existing structures, like say there is the temple president and there is the temple management. So how does this structure work with the existing? How does the yeah. system work with the existing structure? That is the structure, or what does system? No. Mm -hmm. System for the system to be robust and efficient, mm -hmm. it is to be in a proper structure of accountability, responsibility. Who will do what, and who is responsible for what? Oh, okay. So the system is put under a proper structure so that it is efficiently and moving on. Okay, like that. You know, this is a. This is also a good example of what Prabhupada, he told Giriraj Maharaj that how will Krishna conscious movement spread by organization and intelligence? Yeah, yeah. So a lot yeah. of intelligence has gone into this organization. Uh, this whole, this whole, you could say almost like a frame of thought which then works properly. So now you mentioned all this has happened in the recent years, since 2017. So did some things happen in our movement because of which we started emphasizing on devotee care that as per your observation because traditionally i've seen that we have emphasized three main goals you know build temples distribute books and make devotees so now devotee care itself it doesn't it at least was not there so much in the in those three goals although make devotees we have to keep devotees Prabhupada also did say at one time that we have to boil the milk. Now we have enough devotees have to boil the milk. So would devotee care be, say, our movement's application of that Prabhupada's instruction of boil the milk? Or how do you see the emergence of devotee care? What caused it to emerge in the recent times in importance? Actually, actually the uh, GBC had this strategic planning team whose uh, service was to, uh, you know, like half prepare it, which can be scrutinized by the GBC and approved. You know, okay. so when the GB, uh, one of the strategic planning team had many aspects, you know, organization development and uh, guru or Prabhupada's position, things like that. And one of it was preaching. One of it was preaching. Mm -hmm. And when the preaching committee sat, they were discussing and they said, ISKCON has amazing, uh, you know, kind of ev has evolved the preaching technique. We are excellent at going out and inspiring the new people to get connected through various preaching programs. But then, are we retaining the old ones? We are only good at getting the new ones. But like a wicket gate, you know, these people are coming, but what about the others who are here? That was the time it was decided that the preaching will be divided into two aspects, outreach and devotee care. So to outreach is to get the new people and devotee care is to retain them. Retain them. That's the, because in the past we have seen several devotees having heartburns, they felt uh, exploited, they felt manipulated. All are sincere. Everyone was sincere. Everyone was enthusiastic. 
mm-hmm. but somewhere uh, it was felt that we were we were lacking something and that was the time i think recent this was felt much before but in the strategic planning team and the group sat that was the time it was decided that various ways of outreach will be thought by the outreach group while the devotee care will be thinking about how to because at all levels mm. it's like a, a, a newborn child needs nourishment and a 16 year old needs nourishment mm. but they are not the same the kind of nourishment that the senior devotees yeah you know the people in the movement for last day, 30 40 years they need their protection their encouragement their inspiration their fulfillment purpose their contribution for it to be you know also be overseen like for example one of the devotee care is care for leadership leaders are doing everything are they being cared for their needs is it being addressed because people expect everything from the leader till the person drops and only then say oh yeah i think we should have done it so every level of devotee needs different levels of care so that's i think the main issue here mm. that needs to be thought and implemented yes for so so in a sense we can say our movement is evolving and then as we grow we also recognizing what the needs of our community are and then we are creating whatever resources are possible for dealing with those need, for addressing those needs and devotee care is absolutely one major initiative that has come up now in the manual as you said it is there's a lot wealth of wisdom over there one of the things that struck out uh, for me is that it talks about not just being spiritually well situated but also being materially well situated so at first glance it was uh, i appreciated it but i didn't just appreciate the point i appreciated the courage required to make that point <laughs> so to some extent you know, we have been quite dismissive about life's material aspect like even if say devotees face problems we say this is just a confirmation that this world is dukhale so get out of here just work hard to get out of here but but actually we have a long life to live and we need also care for that so you know so can you explain how this idea of being materially well situated came up i appreciate that but what was the what was the experience or what was the thought behind recognizing that devotees need to be materially well situated well the vision statement of the devotee care uh endeavor the effort is in the present tense this is what we want to see how does a caring society look like you know so the vision statement is every devotee is spiritually happy and materially or properly situated okay positively identifying with iskon as a caring society each devotee responsibly takes care of his diverse needs is easily and successfully able to get qualified help within the institution and wholeheartedly sharing that with others that's a lot janma sarthak kari karo paro okay yeah so every word has been so wonderfully thought over and uh, put there so uh, what does it mean because generally when we speak about material materially well situated uh, whenever i have done this some people have argued <laughs> in fact there is one section where a debate is conducted you know being materially well situated is not just unfavorable uh, but rather impediment to spiritual progress yes i am anugrahami harishe tad you know so we have debates and then generally 
the, as soon as we say uh, materially well situated, people think about comforts. People think about fulfilling their wants. People think about wealth, possessions. But really well situated means being properly situated in your particular Varna and Ashram so that you can contribute a lifelong uh, during your whole life. Mm. Generally, I quote for these Bhagavad Gita uh, 3.33. Sadrisham Cheshtate Sosyaha Prakritir Gyana Manapi Prakriti Myanti Bhutani Nigraha Kim Karishani. So this is a very important verse, and the whole purport I read where Prabhupada says artificially trying to repress doesn't work. And I also quote this 8.7 Bhagavad Gita. Maam Anusmara Yudhyacha. Internally you think of me, but externally fight. Hmm. I also quote this uh, eighth canto, second chapter, thirtieth verse of Bhagavatam, okay. where there is a fight between Gajendra and uh, uh, the uh, crocodile, and Gajendra is is extremely powerful and is fighting a long battle, but gradually it says uh, mana balo ojasa. He became weak in his mind, in his senses, and his sensual power because he was not properly situated. Mm. He was in the water fighting for a long time. And because the crocodile was in the water in his natural situation, his strength increased. Exactly opposite happened. And Prabhupada writes, a beautiful, I would like to actually, uh, I knew some. Someone like you will ask such kind of questions. So <laughs> I generally uh, keep it for, especially I work because uh, sometimes people ask this. In the fighting between elephant and the crocodile, the difference was that although the elephant was extremely powerful, he was in a foreign place in the water. During 1000 years of fighting, he could not get any food and under the circumstances his bodily strength diminished and because his bodily strength diminished his mind also became weak and his senses less powerful the crocodile however being an animal of the water had no difficulties he was getting food and was therefore getting mental strength and sensual encouragement then Prabhupada says now from this we may take the lesson that in our fight with Maya we should not be in a position in which our strength, enthusiasm and senses will be unable to fight vigorously. So that position is materially well situated or properly situated. Hmm. The soldiers in this Krishna consciousness movement must always possess physical strength, enthusiasm and sensual power. To keep themselves fit, they must therefore place themselves in a normal condition of life. This is very important. What constitutes a normal condition will not be the same for everyone. And therefore, there are divisions of Varnasha, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, Brahmacharya, Grahastha, Vanaprastha, and Sanyas. And then this last statement I would like to quote. That one has been found to be very weak in one place does not mean that he should stop fighting the crocodile of Maya. One should take shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna as we shall see Gajendra do. You know, mm. so we may lose the battle, but the war must go on. So truly, materially well situated means physically, mentally, emotionally, socially, and spiritually, you need to go on. I would like to share with you one statement, I think His Holiness Radhana Swami was asked in some place to speak about uh, the principles of devotee care. And he made, while speaking, he just kind of made a statement, what I thought can be written as a 
as a question that leaders should always be asking if they want to institute devotee care in the institution or the yatra or the uh, community hmm. he said the leader should be asking this question what would it take for each and every particular devotee to feel protected encouraged and inspired to remain active in the mission of shila prabhupad till the last day of their life and whatever is the answer do that and that is devotee care that's devotee care to keep each every devotee because each devotee is unique different psychophysical nature different background different conditioning so to keep them protected feeling sheltered feeling encouraged and feeling inspired to remain active that means you have to tax your brain what kind of a situation he will be nourished he will be motivated he will be inspired empowered mm. you know till the last day of his life which means now that the cow has stopped giving milk you can't send him to the slaughter house till the last day of their life they must be protected so varishta vaishnavas senior prabhupad disciples terminally ill palliative care i appreciate giriraj maharaj i have to note this the 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 fourth sight is only as giriraj swami maharaj had the big inheritance that he got he invested in brindavan to build the hospice i know several from the where i am going kolapur two devotees one young fellow who was 30 year old developed terminally ill and uh, one lady who was loknath maharaj's disciple uh, about uh, 45 year old the the way they departed from this world in 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 a vrindavan in the month of kartik on ekadashi day surrounded by devotees chanting the holy name this this is what is the is the care part every aspect mm-hmm. you know that needs to be I mean foresight of how to do that and and this is just one i am talking about mm-hmm. there are several devotees who have started education system there are so many who have started hospital there this is not just mundane stuff but but kind of giving them that uh, that encouragement at that stage that protection at that stage yeah. certain needs to be fulfilled at that stage yes fine this is beautiful i think what you read out and the examples that you gave you make this very clear so there are certain situations for example end of life when some special care is required and especially if you want that person to depart in a graceful way and i have also read giriraj maharaj's books about facing life's final exam and some of the very moving experiences inspiring experiences that devotees had at hospice so in the sense this is a very inclusive vision of devotee care so there are specific situations which you have specific need like say end of life and uh, i think some of the most inspiring stories in recent years for many of us have been how devotees have departed gloriously so and if some special facilities can be provided so i would like to talk about two three things which i felt when i travel that devote what makes devotees feel not cared for hmm? one is when say they are managerially sidelined they feel we are not being heard hmm? and related to that itself that means the devotees have some idea of how things should be done and they feel that their voice is neglected or they are not heard at all and that relates with that uh, there is there are <laughs> there are different individuals who need say different levels of uh, space for themselves so because say somebody who is more creative they cannot be put in a rigid rigid disciplinary structure for very long they need to be a little more spontaneous so i've seen that creative people intellectual people often they feel that they don't get understood and heard and the third thing is so oh, and we can we can discuss them one by one is that devotees who are somehow not able to follow certain come up to certain standards or follow certain standards then 
there's one devotee who told me that you no know, iskon is a movement for devotees it is not a movement for human beings <laughs> what they went by that was that that actually as long as i'm practicing a de- devotional life everybody welcomes me but if as a human being i have some human struggles in my life then 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 everybody judges me and condemns me so uh, i i tried to help as much as i could in different parts of the world but uh, so these are these are we could say in a sense macro issues like say providing end of life care is it requires some amount of uh, resources and vision but it's something which is tangible okay this is what we need to do at this time for this person but say uh, making sure that devotees feel heard within a management structure or making that devotees get space uh, so these are these require not just some kind of systems but they require a particular vision of operation and sometimes that may just not be possible for some individuals because every individual comes with their own uh, their own uh, we could say psychological orientation their own upbringing so could it be that you know, some devotees in order to feel cared um it may be that they need to create the space for themselves actually i have asked too many questions right now maybe you could take, <laughs> sorry but maybe you could address these three things one by one so i'll start okay, let's, let's take the first one yeah let's take the first one uh there are many many ongoing research questions it's not that the devotee care committee has figured out everything okay for example who is a devotee in the first place yeah the day he performs is tilak the day he chants 16 rounds everyone is a devotee you know ultimately <laughs> nitya siddha krishna prem <laughs> yeah who is a when does he become entitled to receive care somebody is in a movement for four days somebody is there for four years somebody is there for 40 years are they entitled to the same amount of care the different things okay somebody has given the best part of their life what are they entitled to what they should be receiving mm. of course of course the individual should not be demanding hmm nadhanam najanam na sundari but the leaders proactively should understand those things maturely and try their best to support or create some kind of system for example one devotee gave this beautiful brilliant example i like this take a circus company circus you know in the yeah in the circus they have this trapeze act hmm there is a two rope and then there is a stick and you swing on top of that circus tent you know from one end to the other you swing like that and somebody catches hold of your lotus feet and takes you to the other end <laughs> <laughs> now this act this trapeze act generally is performed in the last as the last item in the circus and that's like the icing on the cake and the name of the circus is is glorified by the acrobatics of these uh uh people workers of the circus and because these are the star performers who are dedicating their life for glorifying the name of the circus the circus wants to protect them care for them so it puts a net there you know so that in case they slip and fall the net is there so the worker's responsibility is to give his life for the company circus company and the company's responsibility is because these people are giving their life for the glory of the circus they have to put the net this is a mutual appreciation respect acknowledging you know mm. so 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 just like the scriptures tell brahmanas should be respected brahmana should be given charity 
otherwise you will go to hell and the brahmanas are told if you take even one pie of that charity for your individual enjoyment you will go to darker hell hmm the atithi devo bhava the whole world is told respect guests respect guests as good as god yeah and the atithi dharma the guests are told don't exploit the hospitality of the host that is why yudhishthir maharaj asked arjun why are you morose did you overstay and were you disrespected in the it is respected in the uh, uh uh at dwarka yes you know so yes Similarly, devotee yeah. should not be demand for care yeah devotee should not demand for care it is a leader's responsibility that because these people have given their life to provide so nobody is entitled but if we are leaders on behalf of the lord to engage people in lord service it's also the responsibility of the leadership to care yoga kshemam vahamyam ananyas chintayantu ma they have given their life in yoga kshemam on behalf of the lord you are engaging them on behalf of the lord you have to protect them also yeah so uh, i remember very clearly in our social development manual uh, we had put that one brahmachari after several years of service decided to change his ashram and the congregation came together came together to facilitate and provide a house for him and when uh, matsya avatar prabhu his grace matsya avatar prabhu maharaj's god brother radhanath swami's god brother from uh, italy when he saw that he said please remove this statement because people may start expecting so if i do this i am entitled to this 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 that's not the best that's not anya vilashita shudh but at the same time it is not responsibility prabhupad cared lord chaitanya cared even though he was he was relishing the highest form of love of god at ashlishiva padaratam pinishma na dhanam na janam when he was speaking uh, shikshashtakam prayers which is like the 20th chapter of antilila which is the end of cc where bhagavatam and cc begins and where cc ends is this but at that time in gambhira and shankar pandit a devotee appointed to protect lord chaitanya from hurting himself in that ecstasy time when he was lying down mahaprabhu picked up the blanket because he was it was cold at night and he covered shankar pandit can you imagine a person experiencing the highest bliss still caring for the body of another vaishnava he could have said you are not the body the same lord chaitanya walked over 150 kilometers carrying the script scripture kurma puran just to pacify that ramdas vipra who was emotionally disturbed that had been abducted you know sita was still and and he was so disturbed just to pacify him he walked physically it may be it may have been 3 days 3 days lord chaitanya personally ordered shivananda sen to become the financial you know kind of guide counselor <laughs> financial counselor to vasudev datta because he was too much compassionate hmm same lord chaitanya was so sensitive haridas thakur said i don't want to see your past time my lord a departing past time personally lord chaitanya came and spiritually cricket protected him his, his his feelings prabhu pa there are so many incidents in our manuals we have you know gathered where prabhu pa was concerned about food that devotees are taking prabhu pa built the chakra building before he built the main temple he cared for the devotees mad bhakta puja bhi adhika he didn't say you are you know this is this is maya taking care of your body these are vaishnavas who are given their lives mm. you know so taking care of their body 
taking care of their emotions, taking care of their uh, needs is uh, not wants. This is another important, wants and needs. Needs must be provided. Otherwise it is, it is, it's insensitive. Violence on the part of leadership to some extent. Violence to not provide for the needs. Basic needs. Yeah, okay. Makes sense. Yes. Basic needs. They're beautiful. They're very good examples of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Shila Prabhupada. So, so before this, you made the point that devotees shouldn't feel entitled and shouldn't demand from an individual level. At the same time, the leader should provide. I think that is almost a universal principle in Varanashram, isn't it? That the Bhagavatam says that one level that uh, the perfection of an old person, that's what the Prabhupada says, goes away into a jungle and dies without anyone knowing about it. But then one of the principles of Varanashram is care for the elderly. So the elderly... Civilized, civilized society is that. Society, yeah. So the elderly people should feel that I should be renounced, but the society should feel that we should take care of them. That's a, that's a very, it can create a very conducive atmosphere. So, but then the real life situation is that what to speak of, um, say, needs being met. Sometimes devotees feel that uh, even if I express, I'm not finding some space, I'm not, help, uh, I'm not having my uh, needs met. So, at such times, say, for example, like I talked about, say, if somebody has certain ideas of how to do things, and then they find that, okay, within the, the management doesn't listen to me and my, my, uh, they just don't hear me. And sometimes some people now from a management perspective, they may, they may have their own vision, their priorities. And this devotee's particular way of doing things may not fit in over there. So we cannot say the management is bad over there and the devotees is necessarily being neglected. But uh, at that time, it's sometimes a little individual initiative may be required. So sometimes I tell devotees that you, know, you cannot get two things simultaneously. You cannot get freedom and facility. So if you want the freedom to do something yourself, some, then, then you have to create the resources, you have to create the facilities. If you want the facilities to do some things, then often those who have the facilities, the resources, the institutions leaders, often we have to go with them. So then you may not get the freedom. So we, we usually have to, you could say, make some kind of uh, choices of what we want. So one of the, one of the ways I find that devotees feel uh, uncared for is when they feel quite choked. When they feel that their their creativity, their ability, they that is not appreciated or engaged, or they are not even given the space for engagement. So we know that in Prabhupada's times, if two devotees had conflicts, Prabhupada would just tell them to go to different places and open different temples. Now, <laughs> is that one level, like a okay, that is one one kind of solution. Uh, and sometimes that's what is required. The world is a big place. There are so many places where we can share Krishna Bhakti. But uh, what can, if devotees have not so much like say financial or other needs, but just the need for their individuality to be manifested, hmm? then does the devotee care uh, vision or infrastructure provide some uh, room for that or some guidance for how that could be done? Well, uh, I read you, I read to you the vision for yeah. devotee care. The mission statement has two, two statements. Okay. Number one, there, there, there are two aspects of care. Care as a virtue. Hmm. Care as a virtue. That means I should feel that I should care for others. Concern, genuine concern for the sustained welfare of the devotees. The second is the care as a function. Okay. You know, to put a robust and efficient system in place. Okay. So that they are cared for. So, uh, for example, this care word is extremely broad. Extremely broad. So, 
there are so many aspects of care physical care emotional care social care spiritual care hmm. now for example education is a part of care hmm. it began as a very simple way today we have education a whole ministry right who are specializing in all types of education then resolving conflicts is a care today we have one ministry for that resolve okay communication is a need but now we have a ministry so similarly it is hoped that under devotee care right now we may start we may start many many things many aspects and some people may specialize and it will eventually grow into a separate specialization a department or a ministry which exclusively focuses on that aspect like finding out people's nature and deciding who is entitled for that kind of freedom who is entitled for that kind of facility who is entitled for that kind of resources they have to also earn it and they have to show the capability of of utilizing it properly not all can be given the same facility but who is to be who is not yeah so true. these th- these things needs to be worked out it is it is a it's a very specialization specialized field yes you know uh, understanding one psychophysical nature what exactly is varnashram and, and and it's like very very it's a different field in itself so these kind of things needs to be at least we have started talking about it under the devotee care at least we are now talking about it so probably when uh, exclusively where the uh, mind goes the energy flows <laughs> so 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 when we start focusing our mind on a particular aspect and do a lot of research thinking about it and producing just how did this devotee care uh, manual come about because the need was felt that care is necessary mm. and therefore a lot of people thinking about it consolidating the information mm. and now putting it in a format so uh, as other ministries have developed because of the need i think these kind of things needs to be uh, deeply thought by those who are experts in that field or there should be people trying to you know develop expertise in that particular field mm-hmm. and 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 document it legal legal is a particular field now right how to how to do things yeah i one of my so i think a lot yes. needs to be now there's a devotee friend of mine who said that they had an international devotee attorneys conference or something like that sangha they had so it's a lot of things seem to be happening that way in america there is a forum for all devotee doctors to come together and care for each other so so it seems that these things are happening organ- organically also devotees are taking initiative and they are creating umbrella forums like that yes see true. these kind of things these kind of things come as a by product of being cared for when they feel cared for there are two types of people when people are nicely cared for mm. they want to reciprocate with gratitude mm. by generously sharing mana sa deho ge ho jo ki chu mor they want to give their life's energy to serve in a substantial way in which is fulfilling such satisfied devotees from their starts projects there are when the devotees are cared for projects manifest because projects are run by people if people are cared for they will take responsibility for the projects when projects are focused on and people are neglected then you know uh, we have a series of dissatisfied people disgruntled elements so it is a natural by product having received so much care now they want to reciprocate to the to the to the mission so it will surely come as a by product that oh okay 
so you said earlier that the mind goes the energy flows that is almost like a sutra you thought of it yourself it is well very well phrased we, we we use it several times oh okay wonderful i, I don't know where it came from no it's it's uh, in one sense it's a very self evident truth but the phrasing is very striking and uh, <laughs> now if you look at this what you are saying is that if you consider devotees and projects so if devotees are satisfied you're saying projects will naturally grow so but if you are if you put projects first then devotees may feel used or neglected or discontented for whatever reasons uh, now in some ways it could be that some devotees also need projects to be satisfied everybody needs some engagement and some need small engagement some need big engagements and because we are also a a missionary movement so it is natural that those devotees who can do big projects which contribute to the missionary outreach naturally they will get we could say more limelight or greater appreciation and those who don't have uh, the abilities to to shine within particular parameters of success then often they feel undervalued or even unvalued and then that creates a problem so in general how do we at one same time be a missionary movement which has to do substantial things in the world at the same time we value those who may not be able to contribute substantially in the things that we are in the mission that we have in this world so prabhupad also is to complete this question now prabhupad also was asked at one time that do you love all your disciples equally so he said yes and he said but if someone comes forward to take responsibility i reciprocate so in a sense some devotees got more association of prabhupad some got less and uh, different devotees have different parameters for considering whether they are valued or not some devotees may feel how much time my spiritual master spends with me that's that's the parameter of how valued i am or different devotees may have different ideas also of how they will be valued how they feel valued so any thoughts on this well uh, let's let's take the first one creating you know like projects for people yeah. uh i think one of the leaders he made a very interesting statement for a disciple he said the challenge of a smaller temple is lot of services and no devotees and okay. the and the challenge of a flourishing community and of devotees is lot of devotees and no services <laughs> that's why i said what would it take to protect right. a, a, in every particular devotee to feel protected encouraged and inspired to remain active in the movement that means you have to tax your brain knowing that person's nature knowing that person's skill sets and abilities uh how to create some kind of a challenge whereby that person is inspired to you know uh give his best so that is also that's also kind of equally yes uh important you know and as regards different levels of devotees uh ravindra swarup prabhu in his very long back 1980s he wrote an article from the kanishtha to the madhyam adhikari society hmm he said in a kanishtha adhikari society people are valued for their position people are valued for their facilities that they are enjoying people are valued uh for this is the apparent uh criteria for advancement how many keys are hanging from the tip of his dhoti or the shawl okay <laughs> what kind of what kind of office he has but in a madhyam adhikari society 
people are valued for their sincerity for their you know putting their giving out their best and he quoted tamal uh, prabhupad telling tamal krishna maharaj as leaders your responsibility is to see, see that everyone is appreciated for their sincere best thing that they are doing giving out their best whether you are a hanuman or whether you are a spider hmm. little squirrel trying to you know push some sand into the ocean but from their perspective they try and do their best as leader and ravindra swarup prabhu mentioned in one particular uh, seminar in that particular article he mentions he said when i was a manager i would judge people's advancement by how how uh, how much they are contributing to the to the to the mission how much are they visible you know how much are they doing some substantial service so there were three ladies who were practically running the whole show and there was one lady who seemed to be little spaced out you know doing some funny things some uh, herbal medicine this alternative <laughs> medicine she was on her own and he said i never valued her till one day these three people who were like the pillars of the temple they fell sick so sick you know and at that time it was this lady who personally on her own took the responsibility to care for them and to bring them on to their feet after weeks and weeks of service that time he said i stopped judging people simply by the external uh, 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 contribution that they may be doing the visibility and the resources that they may provide it sure yes for lord chaitanya roop and sanatan sansthapakal you know they were like the founder acharyas for his sampradaya mm. and kolavichu sridhar was an insignificant you know banana leaf seller but in the eyes of lord chaitanya both were equally giving their best so rather than just the end result seeing their sincere effort at least as a leader one should be very very um, conscientious and cautious and and, and uh, one should be very uh, i would say careful to to make sure that if a devotee is really sincere mm. you know whether it is bahulashwa who served krishna with best of facilities or shruti dev with whatever was available krishna and the sages were equally pleased by their sincerity of effort mm. so we need to have that kind of training uh, you know for the future leaders that they shouldn't be judging the value of a devotee simply by their contribution alone mm. yes they are important they are significant they are they are very dear but in terms of respecting them appreciating them acknowledging their significance you know that is actually a part of care part of care mm. seeing beyond those externals into their sincerity yes. and their effort that's true the when you're speaking these examples so beautiful example of kulavacha shridhar as compared to rupan sanatan i was also thinking about how gurujan pro writes in his book that uh, he used to send regularly as a grahast a small some small donation to prabhupad and prabhupad would be just as happy with that as the radha damodar bus party would be sending like a big contribution based on their book distribution so so in that sense in our tradition there are many examples of this of uh, of the intent being valued more than the the specifics of the external contribution now when we are i was talking had a recent discussion with raj vihari prabhu the american mediation experts so conflict resolution so he was telling that one of the things that our movement uh, lacks is something like grandmothers or grandparents that means it is someone who can with whom you can sit somebody who is wise somebody who is understanding somebody who hears and if we are too much caught in uh, projects 
you have to do this you have to do this you have to do that then it's very difficult uh, to actually sit down and talk and there's another devotee who told me recently that you know this monks podcast you are having 10 15 years this would have been dismissed as sense gratification do something <laughs> so talking of this grandfather and grandmother i am reminded regarding this devotee care i am reminded um uh, of a statement made by bhurijan prabhu who quoted ravindra swarup prabhu he said uh, uh in the about the way we are guiding uh, devotees under us he said uh he quoted ravindra swarup prabhu who said that in the early 60s and late 60s and early 70s he said there was only one adult in the movement and that was prabhupad <laughs> okay <laughs> only one we were, all, we were all like fresh medical graduates with a textbook in one hand and a scalpel in the other wanting to do big surgeries and in the process we hurt many and including ourselves and he said today 30 35 40 years down the line what advice we would give earlier we would give it differently mm. we would give it differently so yes earlier you know like in that passion in that youthful enthusiasm you know this is sense gratification eating is sense gratification sleeping is sense gratification <laughs> but at this stage now he said now we are 60 now i advise differently you know so that's true and now we have fortunately we are third generation i mean uh, you know generation above who are who have seen it and understood what are the consequences and they are guiding us differently and that's how this manual has come about i would like to i would like to read from this manual by the way is uh, this manual available for free download for devotees if they want to read it is it available somewhere so Or far is so far it is given only uh, only on on request and uh, when the seminars are conducted but i think um uh, it may be you can talk to the authorities and see that but i would like to share yes uh, recipients of devotee care and the areas of devotee care this is very interesting what they have thought 12 the areas of devotee care spiritual life health care physical health care mental and emotional marriage sex and relationships child rearing and child care education career and employment financial housing travel and immigration consumer and lifestyle legal and civic and mediation advice oh that's quite comprehensive at different stages in devotees lives it's like a wheel wheel of needs one thing may become so prominent at that time and something done at that time that devotee feels so grateful for that little need i mean a little help that he over he wants to give dedicate his life for that and regarding 12 recipients of devotee care women cows brahmanas children and youth elderly brahmachari community grahastha communities vanaprasthas sanyasis other temple residents leaders and senior devotees so much they have thought over different people have different needs mm. and those so sensitivity means to be means to be uh, uh, you know empathic about their specific needs at that particular time mm. a mother after giving birth to a child the biggest challenge for her is her sadhana for next 2 years mm. at that time i just told one lady said mata ji if you somehow manage to do 16 rounds nothing else is necessary she felt so relieved i said i am not saying this you know your guru maharaj i have heard him saying that mm you know sometimes people are disturbed emotionally and spiritually their faith has been disturbed for some time mm all of these things 
these are small things but when done at the right time with the right attitude overwhelms the devotees with so much of gratitude that they want to generously now dedicate their life for the mission but neglected you know they unless they are really advanced and rise the bow all this they become extremely discouraged yes. disturbed their faith even may be disturbed hmm so overall when you gave this list at one level we could say that uh, much of it is about one's material life but then we really can't separate the material and the spiritual because the material side also significantly affects the spiritual like say if somebody is going to work in a temple in america and the immigration doesn't go through then what are they going to do or if the health is not good so so this idea that uh, once uh, various aspects of one's needs are taken care of so is it that uh, over a period of time we will be evolving different uh, as you said systems for this some of these have already evolved some of them will gradually evolve so this is the these are the vision overall isn't it i would uh, i would say there is a very beautiful statement of prabhu pad in the shrimad bhagavatam uh 1 3 33 there is a statement where he says difference between sense gratification not sense gratification uh and self realization he said self realization means becoming serious about the needs of the soul and becoming indifferent to the needs of the gross and subtle body Mm-hmm. and who is a conditioned soul a conditioned soul is taking the needs of the gross and subtle body very seriously and is indifferent to the needs of the soul okay you know this is how i interpolate from that which yeah, means here is a yeah here is a yeah 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 correct yeah. so here is a conditioned soul who is very seriously taking his gross and subtle body's needs and here is someone like bhishma on lying on a bed of arrows completely oblivious to his needs and absorbed in thinking of krishna hmm. totally aloof from the bodily conception of life from here to here there's a big long journey hmm it's a long journey from becoming serious about the needs of the soul and gradually becoming indifferent see if it is suddenly done if it is suddenly done that leads to problem this is what i was reading whether i was talking you know properly situated prematurely artificially uh, if it is if you kind of make jump over just to please or 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 impress someone in the society that is why when ragunath das goswami mm-hmm. earlier when he left home and came to lord chaitanya the instruction of lord chaitanya to him is very significant he said markata vairagya na karo loka dikhaiya don't do this monkey type of renunciation loka dikhaiya just to impress the people in the community because everyone wants to progress hmm. and when they come to know that this is the side these are the characteristics of the advanced people prematurely we want to reach there you know kind of the gopi bhav club so prabhupa said you are like monkeys trying to jump over mm. don't artificially jump over let it organically happen then he says markata vairagya na karo lok dikhaiya yatha yogya vishaye bhanjo anasakta hoiya yatha yogya yukta ahar vihara se yukta karma se strike the golden mean then yogo bhavati dukha so yatha yogya vishay bhunjo vishay bhunjo okay oh you 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 gratify your senses but don't engage in sense gratification now you may say what is the difference between gratifying senses and sense gratification <laughs> bhakti you know thakur says in bhakti aloka hmm. senses are meant to be gratified but interesting 
while accepting while accepting uh, satisfaction of the senses you have to consider three things number one are they necessary number two are they favorable even if it is necessary and favorable number three accept it as a mercy of the lord that's beautiful so even in the satisfaction of our material needs or material desires we could say that we can see the hand of the lord then it is not outside the ambit of krishna consciousness because we are still yes, conscious yeah, of krishna yeah yeah so yatha yogya vishay bhunja anasatta huya from internally you develop detachment to those things antare nishtha karo bahya loka vyavahar achirat krishna tumai karibe udhar from internally develop the aspiration like raghunath das goswami later even he would drink little buttermilk and he says still i'm wasting my time so much sense gratification i am engaging now what is prematurely trying to jump over a, a state or adhikar that you can't sustain in the long run if you can't sustain it in the long run don't prematurely jump at that move gradually let it be an organic journey so there is utsah but dhairya mm. in the beginning we have utsah you know utsah without dhairya becomes mode of passion yes quick 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 i want to, today i have shraddha tomorrow i have, have to have prema mm. you know and only patience without enthusiasm becomes uh, laziness mode of ignorance anyway next some lifetime or the other <laughs> so in between is the nishtha nischaya full faith that in this very lifetime lord will show mercy that is that two finger of damodar leela yes beautiful yeah you do your best not imitate others not artificially superficially prematurely but don't remain in the comfort zone just go a little bit where it pinches you a little bit hmm. simplify your life and purify your life stay where you are sthane sthitah but gradually simplify and purify then you can be like pundrik vidyanidhi with all opulence or 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 or, or yudhishthir maharaj but internally you are akinchan prabhupad said there are two kinds of akinchana gaur kishor das baba ji and also yudhishthir maharaj or pundarik vidyanidhi hmm. you know so both were equally renounced but at the same time uh, like krishna told arjun if you are not pure you fight to purify yourself third chapter if you are already pure set a good example for people hmm. otherwise they'll think you you are run away out of cowardliness so people need a role model in society hmm. like pratap rudra you know so many wonderful examples we see yes internally they were evolved yeah, so this is actually so the journey should be internal the journey should be internal not superficially external okay so that means becoming materially well situated can have both meanings one is if one is at a particular level then that is the level that is they are suitable that is suitable for them then follow that because that's how yeah. they grow and even if somebody is at a higher level by being set at that level they can set an example of how it can be done so both ways it can help like you said for third chapter of the gita yeah this is uh, the consciousness one, one the reason. consciousness within should be sorry yeah I just the earlier the what you said about sorry the, uh, what earlier you said about uh, this one right that you know, sometimes don't jump up like a monkey you know one reason why that might happen is because it is only those who are at that high position are valued and recognized and appreciated and anybody at the lower position is considered negligible and worthless <laughs> then everybody might want to just jump to that position and be there but if there is a culture of valuing mm-hmm. everyone then people may not even want to artificially jump to a higher level 
so it's both from the individual perspective and the collective perspective also you know people are valued where they are then people also are, are happy to stay there otherwise they they are always eager or always craving to be somewhere where they cannot naturally be at at that place at that this time. is what uh, this is what ravindra swarup prabhu calls in a kanishta adhikari society everyone wants to advance but if they are not trained they think to advance means to become a senior devotee and they will do anything sometimes it even go to the level of hypocrisy mm. so you have to show something but you are you you be your your something else within that is true. so two things can happen this kind of artificial pressure when it is there in a society two mm. things can happen either you become hypocritical you have a outside to show a world and there is inner world that two different or if you are really sincere you go into guilt consciousness and you leave the moment you know okay so i think we are we are talking yeah if there is just to confirm this you know if they if we consider every devotee at one level have like a difference between their actual living and the aspiration so if one way to bridge that is to pretend i am actually where i am aspiring to be the second is that i just reject that aspiration this is impractical so so we need to accept that yes that aspiration may be very high but where am i is also acceptable and i gradually move up for this to happen at a institutional level hmm. you need solid training education that you can't judge a devotee you can't judge a book by just the cover alone the substance is important and that has to be prioritized and emphasized mm. and 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 the the system should also encourage that you know we value devotees not because just like for example i'll just give you one example if a devotee for some reason is not initiated mm. what is your name uh krishna das oh hari bol prabhu ji dandavat what is your name suresh oh <laughs> how long are you in the movement 15 years maybe something is wrong with you otherwise how how come he is not so therefore forcefully i will do anything speak anything do tell anything to get a title to my name so that i will be respected and when a sincere person sees that kind of activity he says i don't want to be part of such a society because mm. i know what he is but he poses to be something else to gain respect and uh, appreciation in the society so even this can happen so therefore we training people on the true values mm. which is based on the principles true principles of spiritual life and the system should facilitate that encourage that inspire that and uh, create environment to sustain that that's true you know so going back to the earlier point which you had mentioned that about that in the devotee can care manual about a brahmachari change the ashram and then the community congregation came together to help the devotee settle down so you know that is also a good example of uh, devotee care i know one devotee good friend of mine he was a brahmachari in a particular temple and and somehow he changed and he said the next day the day i changed my dress from saffron to white it was like from a brahmana i became a achuta people were treating me like untouchable and he says till this day he has never gone back to that temple it's almost he was a brahmachari there for 12 years and now next 12 years he has not even gone back to that temple so i think this also this willingness to accept that sometimes uh, devotees may need to make some changes that externally seem to be like a step down but internally their their sincerity may still be there the serious and we need to value their devotion so this emphasis on externals also creates a lot of judgmentality and then devotees uh, feel like rated and then rejected at times that can become a problem so 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 you are a blue blooded blue blooded fellow if you have this color <laughs> so to remain this because if i as soon as i remove this 
i may not be valued i may i may not be able to maintain myself so i have to become hypocritical just to survive even though i know but i can't survive because this society only respects the position the color the title and not the substance of the individual mm -hmm. of course it may be choti mu badi baat you know it's very easy to speak big big words but that it's a fact this is his principle yeah you know to bring everyone on that platform where they respect others not for what uh, what you have but what you are you know so so in a sense devotee care if you consider this hierarchy of kanishta and madhyama so broadly devotee care means in a sense helping everyone to rise from kanishta to madhyama and of course ultimately to uttama, absolutely ultimately to uttama but at least to madhyama so that you know we do we at the madhyama level we'll asal be able to discern properly and act in a way that care is also exhibited because as soon as you come to madhyama you are forced to appreciate the value of relationships basically about relationships ishvare adhineshu balisheshu dishachu prema maitri kripa mm -hmm. right so it's all about relationships dealings interactions encouraging appreciating protecting mm. you know each other so internally we should aspire for uttama <laughs> but at least rise above kanishta <laughs> okay <It's> beautiful <laughs> yeah so in a sense if we consider kanishta means i have a direct relationship with, with god i don't care for anyone else so yeah. so devotee care in a sense would be difficult in a kanishta movement or for a kanishta level because they, they don't matter only my relationship with krishna matters Yeah. but if you rise to madhyama then yeah devotees matter so they are who shelter me and they are the ones who allow me to serve krishna provide me facility to serve krishna so so rather than seeing devotee care as something separate that we are doing we could also see devotee care as integral to spiritual advancement because in a sense devotee care is the way we rise is at one level the sign that we have risen to, to madhyama from kanishta and is also the way we will rise so by caring for devotees we will for who they are instead of what they, who they have, what they have then we will rise towards madhyama and if you already risen towards madhyama then naturally we will do this so it's it's in, it's an integral to our spiritual advancement it's not something separate we have to do so that later on we can advance spiritually isn't it true true that's what sargrahi means you know looking at the essence Hmm. and not just bharava he simply stuck in the external uh, externals alone externals are important but that alone in and of itself if it is everything then that is very sad imagine we have seen this i have personally seen this simple boy coming for the youth program suddenly one day he decides to don saffron because he has joined the brahmachari ashram he is put on the pedestal that's one extreme just because he has changed the color of the cloth you know somehow the training is okay they you worship him they think that this is what is the substance and internal also and in case after 5 years somehow he honestly says that i think uh, this is not in harmony with my thought process and he decides to change instantly as you said he becomes no one from from d1 to no one <laughs> from d1 to no one very well <laughs> said yeah so so that, that's that it's means you are only seeing the externals not seeing the substance uh, and i like the very you could say the elegant way you put it this is not in harmony with my thought process you know, somebody would put it that you know that i this you are too impure for this but 
that's also a judgmental statement everybody is at a particular level and they need to be facilitated to grow from their level this is one thing that we were taught in the ashram when a devotee is leaving for some reason the word that we is used you know uska fall down ho gaya instead of that we say now he is moving forward to the next ashram you know there are two way of graduating one is you graduate to the next ashram after brahmachari you move to a grastha with with good training solid understanding and conviction of philosophy for the goal of life and also strong discipline so that even in grastha ashram it provided with all these facilities available still i maintain some strong sadhana and not lose my focus on the goal and if a person continues on just as a brahmachari till the end of their life mm. that's also glorious yeah that's also glorious i have seen early 80s you know no sorry late 80s and early 90s i i saw joined in late 80s so i saw if a devotee had to leave the brahmachari ashram he would disappear only during morning program because you know everyone will be upstairs strict standard so he would leave and and uh, the temple president would ask you go to the bus stand you go to the railway station and you go to this place this place just to check out where he is and catch him and bring him and he would leave a note in the locker after packing up everything don't look for me i will not i don't want to come back he had no choice of staying in the community you know he's finished if he can't make it that's it from there at least now the whole community and the congregation understands okay it was glorious if he could have served like that but now he's wanting to move around move along and you know serve from a different position as the gajendra you know if this position is not favorable move to a position where the war, you may lose the battle but the war must go on you must win the war antakale ch mam eva smaran that is winning the war it's not which color which ashram which cloth what kind of resources what kind of respect position you had mm. but did you think of krishna at the time of death you know yeah, this is a good context for applying this battle war metaphor i mean i didn't think of it this way that if uh, we are too caught in appearances or externals then we think gaining the externals is not just like winning one battle it is winning the war itself and if we lose the externals then we think the war is lost now what is more more is there for me? or we may think like that or others may think about us like that but it is just if that's what is yeah if you are educated like that and to and to and and, and the system is also promoting uh, or rewarding or punishing that way hmm yes bhaji so in a sense you know in the bhagavad gita 6 at the 18th chapter krishna says to mistake one thing to be everything to krishna vad ekasmin kare satyam hai to karam that is knowledge the mode of ignorance so to say like blue blood to take that dress to be everything that we could say is almost like knowledge in the mode of ignorance where we are it's not entirely ignorance it is knowledge but is knowledge in such a small framework that it actually doesn't increase one's knowledge it only increases one's ignorance so going back a little bit earlier when you talked about say somebody who is just mother who has a newborn child and then they may find their sadhana also very difficult so it's one, so if some devotee struggle because of whatever you know, their social situ- their conditions or their conditionings even to follow the basic standards of spiritual life so at that time uh, how how can we on one side be understanding at the same time also be i won't say demanding but at the same time you know encouraging to get them back to the standards because sometimes again this happens that if somebody is not able to follow standards they just think that i won't be accepted over here so better let me leave directly so one very senior uh, proper disciple he made a statement 
he said broad mindedness to accommodate all levels of devotees and maturity means to know how to respect them you know so one should be broad mind accommodate all levels of devotees with different background different conditioning you know and different uh, lifestyles that they have come and therefore they may be struggling and again going up and down you know <laughs> like sachinandan maharaj says as a caregiver you know you should be uh we ready to uh be there for them uh like uh uh what did you call it trust for dinas accessibility and willingness to help being there for them so he said give the example when these international flights go in the sky 95% of the time because they are flying 35000 40000 feet above 95% of the time they are off course and the only thing that the pilot does is to bring it on course okay you know? yeah so like that uh devotees come from various background with good intention hmm. and uh, once they start the war not a battle go on and sometimes like fair weather they say <laughs> sometimes they are there sometimes they go away again to bring them back you have to have that patience and broad mindedness to accommodate okay. and the maturity to respect <coughs> you may respect them at a distance you may respect them by you know very selectively kind of being there for them in whatever way that will encourage them i have seen people who have blasted the movement spoke very harsh statements about prabhupada and the gurus and have walked away but i kind of kept uh my my attitude and my connection open as even if they wanted to communicate i was always there several years down the line that person when he felt you know went through very difficult situations he phoned me and he says you please pray for me and even now sometimes he comes out with suddenly you know because he sees so many sites websites and this and that and you know and suddenly he comes out with that then i speak the truth if necessary i blast him you no know, hate the sin not the sinner that that argument i crash it but then i am there for him hmm. so he knows this guy is my well wisher but unconditional at the same time he will not tolerate so he understands and simultaneously uh, you know the bitter sweet kind of an experience hmm. you know he knows that this person will not be judgmental he will accept me but the nonsense if he sees he will lovingly do the needful he will slap just like a mother she won't slap the neighbor's child of course slapping itself is i think nowadays <laughs> you know i was out of love yeah only dhritarashtra only dhritarashtra out of love could chastise his elder brother because he had invested and because dhritarashtra knew he loved him therefore the chastisement acha this is the proof did the chastisement have the required effect otherwise you better not chastise okay yudhishthir maharaj didn't speak that to dhritarashtra he vidura did vidura had that authority he had that investment he had and dhritarashtra had the trust mm. you know that kind of relationship very very deep connected genuine concern genuine concern yes you know this is uh, one thing this is very important thing that what i feel is sometimes uh, we there might be care in the heart for somebody else but that care comes out as excessively chastising words and then it is not felt as care like this devotee who told me that uh that this is a movement only for 
devotees not human beings so they had done something which was considered objectionable by some people and then they got very strong words of criticism were spoken so what you are saying is that we can't presume that i have the authority to correct this person we actually have to earn that authority by by various things by investment by by investment of ourselves and other things and i think sometimes uh, that is one challenge when we have certain standards and there somebody is deviating from the standards we think i have a right to correct this person but we may not uh, we may not actually have that and we may end up alienating people so i say sometimes you know that sadhus they are meant to cut the cut the ignorance but the, sometimes the chastising words of devotees instead of cutting the attachments they end up cutting the bhakti lata beach so <laughs> so they end up you know just uh, disheartening devotees so much that devotees feel i just don't want to be around over here yeah. this is interesting in the mahabharat prahlad maharaj is approached by two devotees and they ask this is for a more like a king yeah arjuna uh, dharma but i place for a leader when should be soft lenient and when should they be strict hmm and there is a whole chapter where prahlad maharaj explains so beautifully he says if you are only strict people will start hating you internally cursing you hmm you know and even if they follow they are following out of fear not out of love but if you are very lenient they may take undue advantage of that leniency mm-hmm. they may even cheat you they may even steal things away because they take you for kind of granted and then it says when should you be lenient <clears throat> if the mistake is for the first time if the mistake is small mm-hmm. if it had happened unknowingly and if it is a first time you know and uh, many other small things like that and when can you be a uh, strict or harsh strong if the person is repeating the same thing again and again mm. if there is no regret in the heart and in fact he is pretending in front of you something but he is doing something mm. <clears throat> like that they, they, they give uh, very beautifully these these are like kind of the leadership training this is where anushasan parva any idea I, i don't remember reading this i think i think it is anushasan parva oh. i think it is something similar about this strict and lenient i spend a good amount of time in the west and in the west there are many single parent families so one of sociologically they found that children who grow up in single parent families they often have problems when they grow old so researchers tried to find out what is the reason so what they found is that children flourish best in an adv- environment of both conditional and unconditional love mm. so if there are two parents then when parent can act as giving unconditional love so maybe the mother acts as unconditional whatever happens you know i am there for you but if the father offers conditional law you did this wrong you have to fix this otherwise there's disciplinary action for you but what happens when there is single parent to offer both conditional and unconditional law becomes very difficult yeah. and either is then the children don't grow up well so what you said about you know strict and lenient both being having its role that's true the good cop the bad cop yeah exactly good cop and bad cop yes really so so we are talking about basically if if devotees somehow are not able to maintain in standards then we you said we need a combination of both the broad mindedness to accommodate everyone and the maturity to respect them appropriately so that they also feel they feel accepted but they also feel inspired to rise up again so that they continue on the spiritual path yes yeah yeah and uh, maybe one or two last points i don't want to take it too much over time so one of the things i have noticed in the devotee community is also loneliness 
which is which one of the uh, like many devotees they feel lonely for various reasons one of them is the fear of being judged that if i if i open my heart and tell some of the dark things that are there what will the other person think of me so this guhiya makhyati pruchyati that somehow doesn't happen so much because i speak some i speak my heart to someone and next day it's on social media that is the fear so any thoughts about how this uh, culture of guhiya makhyati pruchyati can be encouraged or how devotee what devotees who are feeling lonely and unconnected what can they do about it amazing that all of these thing has been thought about by our leaders represented in the devotee and this is core skills for caregivers okay there are four things very important first respecting confidentiality okay second making referrals third building rapport fourth considering ethics so under respecting confidentiality says personal integrity is most important for a caregiver breaking confidentiality is a serious and culpable breach of trust however practicing confidentiality may not be as simple as we initially might suppose three time three places you can break confidentiality not otherwise you know there was one devotee who had come he was telling come what may you should never ex- really expose your i mean if somebody has told you something in confidence you should never tell others i said the what if that person is about to die or something whatever you ask him if he does not give you should not mm. somehow that didn't sit in my heart yeah so i like came across this he said three situations number one self harm or commit suicide if someone comes and tells you prabhu ji mm. i'm disgusted with life tomorrow morning i'm committing suicide here is a note you can give it to the temple president <laughs> <laughs> oh god that's serious <laughs> you better you know take action harm another person or he says i'm going to kill the temple president this is the gun that i brought licensed to kill mm. i'm just joking yeah third break some laws you know temple needs a lot of funds and tomorrow i am uh, you know uh, going into st- you know stealing the bank of america or what <laughs> so three self harm harm another person or break some laws that is true isn't? only then you could not otherwise otherwise you go ahead yeah i think you know that, you may yeah. you may take permission from that person i think you need help can i discuss with someone without telling your name and come back to you with some solutions you know yeah. facilitating that kind of thing Yes, I think these exceptional situations are really exceptional. In the Catholic Church, also currently in the West, there is this debate going on because there is child abuse. So if there is a priest and somebody confesses child abuse, yeah. now should the priest keep that as confidential or should the priest tell the authorities? So yeah. there is there is they also recognize that you cannot have absolutely inviolable confidentiality, but that is different from just casually violating confidentiality also. Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. So, Prabhu, you said four principles. Giving a reference means what? Giving reference to experts or giving reference of scripture? Yeah. That when you realize you can't help, don't become possessive of your, you know, protege. You know, and you better share, recommend to somebody who is able to guide that person. Oh. Don't become possessive of the individual. Yes. Understand your capacity. If it is beyond you. send it to someone who can help that person yeah it's not about you helping it's about his getting the help that's important for us then building a rapport connecting at a deeper level not just because you happen to be an official counselee of mine but genuine friends you know and considering ethics you know sometimes in the name of help it may go beyond a per- any relationship especially if it is opposite sex it shouldn't go beyond a line of ethic you know because yeah true it will be a disservice to both yourself and to the other person yes and that previous point which you mentioned about giving reference it struck me that say 
the difference between service attitude and possessive attitude would be that service attitude means that i want this person to be helped but possessive attitude would be i should be the person helping nobody else so that's true that's beautiful yes, so so the answer to my question about loneliness was that you said that in general devotees need to internalize the value of confidentiality then others will feel that they can open up and they won't be they won't be threatened by that and that's how loneliness can be dealt with also uh, also the standards of that community you know why is that person feeling lack of prabhupad writes very interestingly in that dadati pratigrihnati verse uh, fourth verse of noi mm. he writes this movement was started single handedly and just because of the six loving exchanges it is expanding all over the world so is con was established to have these loving exchanges yeah. um, one among that is guhya makhyat bichha mm, so so three things required for a caregiver trustworthiness acceptability Acc- or, or, or accessibility or, uh, 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 accessibility no, no. Uh, accessible accessibility yeah to be trustworthy to be accessible and willingness to help three things so trustworthy in terms of in terms of the source of knowledge you know and the guidance that i am receiving i have faith in the body the body of knowledge that is referring to i have confidence in his skills to guide me and i have trust in his being my genuine well wisher okay right so that is trustworthiness then accessibility is of two types physically accessible and mentally accessible mentally means to be able to relate and put yourself in their shoes you know sometimes we get this experience you go and tell someone and he repeats and he say no no no, no prabhu ji you don't understand no no you mean this no 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 prabhu ji i'll do one thing i'll come tomorrow that means you are not that person felt that you are not able to relate to him and opposite of that is you tell him something and he says so if i understand you right this is what exactly prabhu not only that i'll tell you a little more so that is mental accessibility third is willingness to help that means even if that person goes little as i said you know out of track uh, uh, like a like a flight in mid air you should again gradually bring him back to track non judgmental and being there for that person Mm-hmm. if these three things are there in the caregivers if these people the caregivers are trained to become trustworthy to be accessible and they are there at any cost willing to help under all circumstances why would a devotee ever want to leave why would he ever want to leave mm-hmm. in fact he will feel so sheltered or true you know yeah. even if somehow if he goes but that thread is there one window is open for him to turn to and sure enough uh, you know he will even inevitably come invariably after some situation after going through some situation in life if the trust element is there if that accessibility is there so what narad muni says is that if somebody leaves krishna at lotus feet they still remember the taste of krishna and that pulls them back sometimes that taste yeah. could also be the taste of the devotee association that if they have experience because sometimes krishna's love can manifest through the loving interactions of devotees also so sometimes it can be the that can also bring the devotee back even if they somehow this is very interesting you made a very interesting point it reminds me of one thing in brahad aranyaka upanishad mm. <clears throat> uh yagyavalkya is asked by his wife maitri she says what is that one, one thing which is there then all other needs e thoda even if they are little bit abound below it doesn't matter what is that one need 
and uh, yagya valkya says to love and be loved ultimately each soul is looking for love unconditional uninterrupted mm. you know love and 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 unlimited we can't give unlimited love but we can become an instrument of the lord's love that's what prabhupada was you are ever well wisher that love on a physical man- form mm. manifests as providing for your basic necessities food clothing shelter mm. that love on an emotional level manifests as appreciating acknowledging encouraging and on the level of the self giving you self worth accepting you unconditionally whatever you are i am still there for you and once they acquire that love that shelter then dhanam janam sundari nothing bothers them but till that love is there it has to manifest in these levels that is materially well situated <laughs> you know because right now they can't understand that spiritual love that's too high just like parents why we feel so grateful to the parents because they have shown practical love by giving us this facility of the body by raising us up giving all our needs accepting us unconditionally through the form of mother's love chastising us protecting us and putting us challenge to grow in the form of fatherly love mm. therefore even though we walk away but our, our heart is always there in times of distress we go there because we know they love us in that sense unconditionally on a material level what to speak of a spiritual spiritual master no so beautifully put that means other than seeing materially situated well situated as something separate from spiritual life and spiritual happiness we can say that that need to love and be loved which is fulfilled at the highest level in being purely krishna conscious and being absorbed in krishna that also has to be fulfilled at whatever level we are at and say if somebody is hungry and they are being provided food at that time somebody is sick and they are provided medication at that time then that is how they will experience krishna's love at that time and if a devotee is not provided that then even if it's a devotee who is seeking to grow they will feel uncared for so we in a sense we need to have that holistic vision that a person's <coughs> needs when they are fulfilled then they are going to connect with krishna and say further connected with krishna so material self so material well situated it needn't be seen as something separate from spiritual life but it can be seen as a as as an appropriate expression of how spiritual life is to be practiced at that particular level of the devotee isn't it yes. prabhupad prabhupad had only one intention to give krishna to everyone he had no other intention mm. but when he saw them at what level they were these hippies he gave them food he gave them a facility he gave them a social identity as vaishnav as iskon he gave them a sense of belonging he gave them a, a significance he gave them spiritual direction he gave them satisfaction in the form of love through physical needs emotional needs all other needs but at the same time spoke that this is just the first installment the real thing is this you know through his books and through his uh, guidance that he was giving beautiful so i mean just to some as this to conclude this then we provide people's present needs to be provided for and their ultimate needs are also to be provided for so if we only pre- yeah. focus on the present then we will just become a part of this world but if we focus only on the ultimate then we may become irrelevant in this world 
so people will feel that there's nothing for me right now over here so right now i have to do something else and later on i'll take care of this so we balance both the present needs and the ultimate needs and so because i'll share with you i'll share with you one thing yeah as a parting as a parting uh, thought yeah please in every organization hmm there are two types of people the conservatives and the liberals hmm the conservatives are concerned about conserving the principles hmm <clears throat> and the liberals are concerned about being liberal about the nitty gritty details but when the conservatives in addition to the principles also become too conservative about all the details then they become hardliners they become even to the extent of fanaticism fanatics they are seen as fanatics you know extremists and when the liberals in the name of liberality in addition to the details also become liberal about the principles then they become diluted compromised and eventually deviated and it takes a lot of maturity hmm and a saragrahi to always remain focused within on the principles and broad enough to accommodate the details just so that others can accept this principle you know accept the love of krishna hmm ultimately that is the only shelter but right now that shelter is too far away that is why krishna in the eighth chapter you know uh, 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 in the uh, uh, no in the 12th chapter 8 9 10 11 so mm-hmm. the ideal is this you can't do this this you can you can't just give them away okay you're not devotee you're not human being how can that be that that's 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 harsh that's hard heartedness in the name of conservative but in the name of liberality you can't just as prabhupada says open hospitals and schools and things like that and give away krishna prem so this requires lot of maturity yeah. you know balancing the the spiritual focus and the uh the it's just like a jewel the jewel is this but you need a gold ring to put the jewel so an organization it's the evil of an organization as prabhupada put it down the said yeah. you know an organization means all this power position things facilities resources but if had the organization not been there we wouldn't be at least i wouldn't be here mm. so it was prabhupada's love that he gave us this organization knowing fully well that it has it's going to be you know problems mm. but without that we couldn't have received we wouldn't have sustained and remained here long enough to understand you know ramanand rai's conclusion with said a lot chaitanya ultimate goal of life yeah beautiful <laughs> good so a lot of things you said it that like that example of conservatives and liberals so conservative about principles liberal about details now we could say this is included in that two meanings of niyamagraha so one niyamagraha one is that just following the rule for the sake of following it that means you know imposing not only the principle but also the details you could put it that way and then rejecting the rule itself niyam agraha could mean that we reject not only the details but reject the principles also we order the bath water we order the bath water yes roji that's true this is a beautiful note so should i try to summarize roji we discuss a lot of things i don't know please please i because <laughs> i don't know what i spoke <laughs> like lord chaitanya said do mad people gather then they speak madness increases <laughs> <laughs> oh god so i think we discussed broadly on the topic of uh, devotee care specifically in terms of being materially well situated and spiritually happy so you started by how you experienced uh, care in radhagopna temple under the guidance of radhanath maharaj and then you wanted to share this with others and then you saw the shastrik you had the internal conviction but the confidence to share came when you also saw that it has shastrik basis in 
as Niranjan Maharaj in Caring for Krishna's Devotees explains through various ways, so that the principles are that devotees need to feel sheltered and they need to have strength. And then you talk about that superb hierarchy. I think you have uh, universal principles that can be accessed through values. And then they are implemented as guidelines, which translate into systems. Practice. Practices. Then practices. Become, practices, then which become systems, which come together to become systems. And then the systems have to be in a structure for accountability. So that was very comprehensive. And then uh, we talked also about this aspect of within devotee care, becoming materially well situated and spiritually happy. That was, I think, the broad part of the discussion. So materially well situated doesn't mean that we simply pander to all our material desires, but it means that what a person needs to grow spiritually. So we cannot repress our nature as Mother Bhagavata says, or as Gajendra's pastime Prabhupada says that we have to find out where we can best fight. So we may lose a battle, but we have to keep fighting the war at an appropriate place. And then within materially well situated, you talked about, you quoted Bhakti Thakur that, you know, senses are meant to be gratified, but that doesn't necessarily mean sense gratification. It means that it's necessary, it is uh, favorable, and it is horror. It Krishna's, Krishna's mercy. It is yes, Krishna's mercy, yeah. So then uh, we also talked about specific areas in which uh, devotee care, like end of life care, which is a, uh, and you said Giraj Maharaj pioneered the hospice. And then there is care for devotees at specific stages of their life. So somebody may need care just in the form of some support, like somebody is struggling with their sadhana because they just have a new baby, then just don't worry too much about sadhana, just do the basics. So it could be some small, some gentle words of support. And then we discussed about, uh, uh, again, a large part was avoiding judgmentality. So you talked about Kanishta and Madhyama. In Kanishta societies, uh, advancement is equal, equal with externals. Like say the size of the office or the number of the keys in the, in the, in the dhoti or whatever. So, so then people either try artificially to get to that position and pretend which makes them hypocritical. Or they, because they feel that this is not going to work for me, they just leave. They become guilty and then they're isolated, go into themselves or just go away completely. So then uh, Madhyama society means that we appreciate it not, not people not for what they have, but for who they are. And uh, you talked about these projects and devotees that if devotees are satisfied, devotees are happy, then naturally they will do various services and projects will emerge. But Sometimes uh, if you prioritize projects too much, then devotees may feel neglected. And uh, so in our movement, at one level, because we are missionary, those devotees who can do a lot of services, they will get certain prominence. But then it is the, it is the importance of the leaders to recognize that everybody should be valued. Like many examples of Lord Ram valuing the squirrel or the spider as well as Hanuman. And then there are many... Uh, then we also discussed before that about how devotees shouldn't feel entitled to care, but the movement should feel, the managers, the leaders should feel that we have to give care. So there are many examples of Prabhupada giving care. So then it will be very congenial. Otherwise, if people start demanding, then it becomes unwholesome. And then when we talk about devotee care, it is holistic. It is not just that I care for the soul. The conditioned soul is one who cares for the body and mind more than the soul. And the liberated soul is one who cares for the soul more than the body and the mind. So then while people are along the journey, then they need to be helped throughout. So like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, while in ecstasy also put a cloth on Shankar Pandit because he's feeling cold. That means the you know, devotee care has to be, you can't just you have to care for people where they are at. And then you talked about, uh, say, if somebody is externally not be able to stay at a particular position, say like in saffron changes to white, then they need to be accepted. They, need, they can't be rejected just because the external position has changed. And that requires both broad mindedness to accommodate where devotees are and also maturity to respect them appropriately so that they can grow. So you talked about both like motherly and fatherly love or unconditional and conditional love, which helps people to grow properly. And another thing we talked about Kanishta and Madhyama is that in 
Kanishtha, we don't value devotees and relationships. We value only Krishna. So if we start valuing devotees and valuing devotees automatically means devotee care, then we will move towards Madhyama. So devotee care is not something we separately do just because we're in the material world. Devotee care is the way we rise from Kanishtha to Madhyama and also shows that we have risen to Madhyama. And then another aspect of becoming materialistic well situated is that that like Raghunadas Goswami is told by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that you don't be like an external renouncer. So if somebody is not advanced enough, they don't have to jump to a higher level. They need to just stay where they are and they need to be valued by the society where they are. And even somebody at a higher level, sometimes they may like Krishna told Arjuna to fight, to do his duty because then they can set an example for society. And then toward the end, we discussed about loneliness and we talked about how caregivers need to respect confidentiality. So confidentiality should be inviolable most of the times, except in the case of self-harm, harming others or breaking the law. And then there are other, we shouldn't be possessive. We have a service attitude, but not positive attitude. That means we care for, we want people to be helped, not that I have to help them. So we can refer them to the appropriate authorities when necessary. And then caregiver, I think you talked about three virtues that the willingness to help, the trustworthiness and the accessibility. And accessibility is both physical availability as well as the, you could say the emotion, mental compatibility. And then through this, if we all come together and practice, then devotee care is one way in which, like what Prabhupada wanted, Prabhupada himself cared for devotees, so means Prabhupada wanted the milk to be boiled. So right from the, whenever a devotee comes, lifelong the devotee stays practicing bhakti. And then sometimes we have to stretch our minds to engage devotees. So to feel encouraged, inspired, and as you said, engaged or active, alive in bhakti. So that's a huge program. And there is, there's, the, there's the virtue at individual level, there's the system at the institutional level. And then each of us can play our part in, in caring for devotees. And gradually as the movement also evolves, more and more devotee care systems will also come in place. So any concluding words, Prabhuji? Anything I left out? Anything you want to add? I'm simply I... amazed at okay. how you have summarized. <laughs> no. actually, actually, I feel like Lord Chaitanya is sitting on the banks of Godavari and making Ramananda Rai an instrument oh. through his questions <laughs> to extract and then summarize and give to the whole world. I don't know what I spoke, but I think your questions, you know, I was praying to Krishna and Prabhupada probably inspired me to become an instrument in your hands. <laughs> yeah. so Thank you so much for summarizing, you know, like, it's like, I didn't know what I spoke, but now I'm, I'm able to appreciate. <laughs> no, I also forgot one point about Niyamagraha, which you said at the conclusion, you know, that be conservative about the principles, but liberal about the details. That is also beautiful. So thank you very much for your wonderful <laughs> association, Proji. And I hope that many devotees can benefit from the devotee care values that you embody and that you are sharing. So thank you very much for your association and guidance. Hare Krishna. Thank you also for giving me this opportunity to share this wisdom of so many amazing Prabhupada disciples and their experience and their cumulative wisdom and concern, which has manifested in the form of this small, but extremely profound and uh, concentrated uh, their love for the next generation in the form of their, this care. And I think just by hearing your podcast, people may be inspired to know more about devotee care which I think is really serving its purpose. Yes, Thank you so much, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.